hello, this is Virtual the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Welcome to another episode of Chess Noob Game Reviews, where the focus will be looking at how a game could have been improved. So in this match, I played the Vienna game, and my opponent responded with the Max Lang defense with then d6. What do I mean by that? So I have the white pieces, e4, e5, knight c3, Vienna game, knight c6, the Max Lang defense, and of course here I did a bishop to c4, and now d6. Now Stockfish would say that developing the other knight is best, however this d6 move is perfectly solid. It's rock solid, it's really good defense, and there are no real ways for us with the white pieces in the Vienna to immediately exploit this. Like there's not some sort of killer move that's gonna make black regret making that move. So it's not really a mistake in any way. So how do we respond with white? Now, if you look at stockfish analysis, it will say that the best next move is for us to develop the other knight like this. However, if we did that, this basically transposes into Italian game-ish lines. It effectively becomes Italian-like game. And, you know, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. However, I don't play to Vienna to play an Italian. So if you weren't going to accept moving that down line, so that's a decision you have to make, that's perfectly good. The next option is maybe trying to play some Vienna ish type ideas, and that would be trying to get the pawn here to f4, developing the knight behind that pawn, and if that is our goal, the next few moves become obvious. So for us to develop the knight behind the pawn, well for firstly we need to move the pawn to f4, but we can't move the pawn to f4 at the moment because it will just straight up get taken, it'll be lost with no compensation. And so we need to defend the f4 square with that bishop, and for us to do that we need to move our d-pawn. Now it doesn't make sense for us to move our d-pawn here because you know that square is defended twice, and so it's going to be d3. So that's what I played in this game, uh, and the idea is then we can develop the f-pawn and then the knight behind. They now push um, their h-pawn, which is a fine move, now obviously trying to defend the g5 square. It's a little bit slow, so black is playing conservatively, and this now allows us to very safely push f4. Uh, they develop that other knight now, that's fine, our knight behind our pawn. And next we have the possibility of short castles. Now they now immediately pushed their bishop to g4, ostensibly trying to pin our knight to the queen. Now this is a pattern very worth learning in the Vienna game uh, and Vienna gambit type lines. In this position, especially given our pawn is now on f4, there is a possibility of trapping that bishop. So the best immediate move, um, but it's quite committal, is the immediate attack h3. So we're gonna ask black why did they move their bishop. Now if they take, that is fine. We take back with the queen, queen's is on a good square, uh, we short castles, and then you know, nice battery down the f file. Now if they choose not to immediately take, I think their best move is actually retreating their bishop. Uh, this is a overly committal move this early in the game for black. Most commonly, they'll retreat that way. And now we can push our g-pawn, so as I said, very committal, because it probably doesn't really make much sense for us to castle kingside anymore. Now the bishop, again, has to retreat back, and now f5, no connect 4, and if the opponent hadn't pushed this pawn earlier to h6, the bishop would now be trapped. Now they did do that, so the bishop can now move back, and notice that we've sort of forced their bishop to make multiple moves. So uh, one, uh, yep, so one, two, three, four. Four consecutive bishop moves, with the bishop sort of off, you know, tucked away in a corner, and we really gained a bit of tempo here. Uh, we've got this very lovely, you know, connect four, uh, you know, with this uh, pyramid on this side as well. However, as I said, if it's very committal, we kind of have to uh, 
either keep the king in the center or castle, queen side. Here I decided to um, go on a bit of a chase, so push, I expect them to take, now, uh, now capture back with the knight. So you can see Stockfish thought that this was not the right approach. I think I end about plus 0 0.6 here, but the bishop is now forced into this very, very odd position, you know, these two bishops here, um, and, uh, and the game continues. And the interesting thing is, is, is that it is actually quite equal for black, but for the player with the black pieces, it doesn't feel equal. It feels like they've really been pushed back and they have a serious problem with their position. So that is potentially good for me from a psychological perspective. So now I decide to push forward by uh, push forward, basically having an attack here. Uh, this was, um, yeah, I think ostensibly an okay move. Uh, I was going to otherwise take anyway, but here I thought, yep, let's just take that bishop and they capture back and this is potentially okay for me. Now I develop my uh, my bishop. I actually wasn't entirely sure what was the best move to do, but I wanted to clear open here to potentially to queenside castle. Push, that's fine. Retreat the bishop rather than opening up the center. Uh, potentially if we sort of lock this down, it, I thought it might be a little bit better for me. Queen forward, obviously they want to castle queenside as well. I now make um, probably a less accurate uh, less accurate development of the queen. Stockfish sees that this is better. Small advantage to black. Uh, they now uh, queenside castle, I queenside castle as well. And we sort of really now enter into the middle game. Again, very, very equal between the two sides. But I would argue, you know, especially with this uh, uh, connect four, it just feels like it's easier play with white and that white is actually a hit. They try to attack, that's fine. Takes, them taking here was probably the wrong approach. It moves their, uh, their knight to the wrong side of the board because everything is going to happen now on the queen side in terms of the attack, their attack and also their defense. So I now take, that wasn't the most accurate move either, rather complicated position, they take, I now move my knight here uh, with an attack on the queen, and this was um, you know, potentially one of the problems with moving their pieces out onto the king side. You know, these pieces aren't really contributing to the defense or to the attack. The queen moves across, I decide to move my bishop out of the way, you know, obviously it is being attacked by the uh, by the knight. Stockfish thinks that actually liquidating here was better. I wasn't so sure of uh, that in terms of opening up that file for their rook, but it's interesting Stockfish is you know, unafraid. Uh, they develop, uh, they push a pawn, I suspect they weren't entirely sure what to do, and here I decided, look, I've got an attack here, because queen uh, and bishop, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to really hold on to that bishop. Uh, and black here now cracks. In this position, I think we're actually really equal. Um, yeah, zero, zero, zero. However, this attack looks so threatening, black decided that they were going to trade queens, but in trading queens, of course, they also damage the defense around their king. You can see this is a mistake, and in fact I get a quite a good advantage. At high depth by Stockfish, it's plus 1.8. Thought about this for a while, and I decided, yep, trading is best for me. So captures, captures, I take that pawn as well. Stockfish didn't think that that was the best move, but what I was seeing here is that now that I'm just slightly ahead, my goal is to try to force trades of pieces in the middle game. Uh, simply, they've got a deficit in their defense, so I am ahead, I'm slightly ahead potentially on material, so if I force the game into an end game, I will probably transform into a winning end game, because I thought that my defense around my king was completely rock solid, and this ended up working for me. So with this, I think uh, black wanted to trap my uh, my bishop, but this was a serious mistake, um, and pretty much against this forthright attack, uh, black is drawn kind of into the wake, you know, into the sort of the consequences, the ripples after that attack. It gets sucked into that sphere of influence, and they actually make a mistake. You can see that's a blunder at high depth. This is plus four point six. So what's next?
trade, force trades, take with tempo, bring it back. And here I'm now plus two. And you know, they're trying to take my bishop, that's fine, force trades. Uh, and unfortunately for black, I think here they get a little bit flustered. Um, you know, this pawn obviously is a passed pawn, so they've sort of forced to put their rook into a relatively passive sort of square. I push uh, my knight, seeing that potential attack, uh, and unfortunately black mix misses that fork that's, uh, that's coming up. They try to advance their knight to, you know, try to do some counterplay. That doesn't work. Knight forward, forked, um, forked uh, rooks, and take force capture, basically. And now I am significantly up on material. Rook pair versus rook and knight, completely winning. So here there's a bit of uh, sort of end game shuffling. Uh, this is very nice. This, uh, that comes, of course, with check. The king is forced to move. Uh, and potentially, you know, there's uh, there's going to be a future attack there. So check again. Uh, they decide to take this way, but now I take the knight. Uh, and this is one of the things, you know, rooks against the knights in the end game. The rooks are just more powerful. Check. You know, the king is forced. You know, that's with a check. Check. Also defense of that pawn. Uh, take. And here, you know, they give it checks, but you know, the king can sort of hunt down an enemy rook. They sort of move back. Check. Now cut, uh, now enemy king is cut off on my side of the board. Take. Uh, and here is potential mate. So takes, takes. They move their king back. They move. And now they have to, uh, they, they decide to resign because the next move is going to be mate. So this rook cuts off the king. King has only one move, which is here, and then that will be mate next turn. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to explore and practice some of the lines that come out of the Max Lang defense as a Vienna player. They tend to be somewhat positional in flavor and can be a bit different to the Vienna Gambit lines. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.